So another idea it's important to understand when discussing Cassandra query language is the idea of materialized views. Serialized views were originally introduced to help overcome some of the problems of using secondary indexes, especially when we're creating indexes on columns with high cardinality. So that means columns that will result in large groups of data from different nodes across the cluster being returned for a single query. Obviously, these queries are very expensive to perform. So materialized views help solve issues with secondary indexes by creating a number of pre-configured views that allow queries to be performed on additional columns that were not part of the original primary key. So for instance, if we have a table, say this table here called employee by car make, because car make is the only primary key, we can see it here in red. This means that we can only query the data on the car make. So we can only query say, get all employees where car make is BMW, it is not supported, say, to get all employees that are part of the HR department, even though that data is contained in this table. So what a materialized view will do is it'll create an additional view or kind of like an additional table where it holds the same data but uses a different primary key. Say, in this case, the primary key might be based on department, which will allow us to query on employees by the department so this also simplifies our application development as Cassandra is responsible for keeping our views in sync with the base table. So in this case, employees by car make is the base table with the view we made on department being the materialized view. Whenever we update the employee by car make table, the materialized view will also be updated. So say we update this row here and we change employee with ID 10's department to be the IT department, this will be reflected in our materialized view. There is clearly some drawbacks when using materialized view, and it's expected that a small performance hit on writes will occur in order to maintain consistency between the base table and the views. And materialized views are always created on an existing base table. So in order to create a materialized view that will allow us to query on department, we use the create materialized view command in Cassandra. We then specify the name of the key space we want to create it in, in this case, test key space, and we want to give the materialized view a name. We will call this materialized view employee by department, as what we are trying to achieve is query employees based on the department they're in. We then type as select star because we want to select all the rows from the base table and we want to give the name of the base table. In this case, it's again in the test key space and it's called employee by car make. We then need to specify a number of filters and we must specify a filter for every column we're using as part of the primary key in our materialized view. So this will include the department column as this will be the partition key for our materialized view. But the primary key for a materialized view must also include all columns that were part of the primary key for the base table. So this means that our primary key for our materialized view will have to include car make, car model, ID and department. So we can specify department as the partition key, which will allow us to query on the department and we can then specify car make, car model, and ID as clustering columns. So the combination of the clustering columns and the department as the partition key will make up our primary key in our materialized view. So as we were saying, we have to specify every part of the primary key as a filter in our materialized view. And to do this, we simply type where, and then we give the name of each column that makes up the primary key of our materialized view. So we'll start with department, and then we say is not null. And we type and, and we give the next one. So car make is not null and car model is not null. And finally ID is not null. Now that we've specified all the filters that are required to create the materialized view, we need to give the primary key for our materialized view. And we do this the same way as we would for creating a primary key for any other table. We type primary key 
and then we start by giving the partition key, in this case department, and then we must specify our clustering columns, bearing in mind that in a materialized view, we must specify all parts of the original table's primary key as part of the primary key of our materialized view. So that means we have to specify car make, car model, and ID all as part of the primary key for our materialized view. And we press semicolon and we press enter to create the materialized view. So our materialized view should be created now and we should be able to query this materialized view to get data on employees based on the department they are in. So we can again press select star from test key space employee by and now we have the option to do employee by department. And we can see here that we've returned employees and the red of the department column indicates that it is now the partition key. So we can filter on that where department is equal to say for instance HR and that should just return our HR employees. If we do where department is equal to IT, we should be able to return just our IT employees. And we will still be able to query the original table. So we can do select star from test key space employee by car make, where car make is equal to BMW. And we should return the employees who drive BMWs. And this gives us a much more efficient and quicker way of querying based on multiple columns than if we were to create multiple tables, it would be hard to keep them in sync with each other. Or if we were to use secondary indexes, it would be much less performance. Now we can demonstrate how a materialized view is kept up to date if data in the original table changes. So first we can view data in the original table. This gives us all the data in the original table. So we can see here that we've made a query to get all employees from the HR department. Say for instance now one of those employees transfers out of the HR department and into the IT department. So this would be performed on the original table. So we might update employee by car make and we want to set department equal to IT and then we need to specify all the values of the primary key in our where clause for the original employee by car make table. So where car make and we'll use this column here to change. So where car make equals Audi and car model equals saloon and ID equals two. So when we perform this update, we'll be updating the original employee by car make table and we'll be setting this employee with IDs to department equal to IT. So we'll run that query. We'll view our original table first. Select a star from employee by car make. And we can see the employee with ID two is now part of the IT department. If we perform our original query, selecting from the employee by department, where the department is HR, we can see now that only three rows are returned, which is different from the original four rows because the materialized view has updated after we updated the original employee by car make table. This makes managing multiple views and multiple tables in Cassandra much easier as we don't have to make multiple queries for an update to one value that might affect several tables. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions on materialized views, please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel.